So we're going to start this off with some bad news. Did you know that in the United States, there are about 11,000 injuries in confined spaces every single year? An even worse fact is that there are about 92 fatalities in confined spaces every year. That averages out to almost two deaths per week. The problem with this is that if people were following procedures, almost all of these incidents could have been prevented. But you don't really know when to follow procedures in a confined space if you don't know how to identify confined spaces. And often, the definition of a confined space leaves more questions than answers. In this video, we are going to get crystal clear on identifying confined spaces, and I promise not to bore you in the process. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. But you can't really be safe in a confined space unless you know what one is. So that's where we're gonna start. According to OSHA, a confined space needs to meet these three criteria. The space has to be large enough and so configured that an employee can bodily enter and perform assigned work, and have limited or restricted means for entry and exit, and is not designed for continuous human occupancy. The problem is OSHA code is written in language that nobody in their right mind uses. I mean, I hope nobody would talk like that. That would be weird. Let's talk about what this actually means. Number one, large enough and configured that an employee can enter and perform assigned work. If we put that in plain language, it means that the space is actually big enough for you to get inside and do your work. Now, which of these images would meet that criteria? How about a tank like this? Yes, you could actually get into that tank and do work like cleaning or repairs. Or a space like this. Yes, you could fit into that space and do work like inspections, utility updates, or whatever you needed to do. Or this. With this one, we're gonna go with a no. And the reason is based on the image. This worker could probably not physically get inside one of these tanks. If you can't physically enter a space, chances are you wouldn't struggle to get out if you became injured because you were never in the space in the first place. A space that can't be entered is not considered an OSHA confined space. Okay, making sense so far? Now let's move on to the next one. Number two, has limited or restricted means for entry or exit. Okay, so this one's pretty easy. All that they're asking is, is the space difficult to get in or out of? How I think of this one is if you were injured in that space or there was an emergency, how difficult would it be for you to exit? Knowing that, which of these images would you consider a confined space? For this utility hole, you know that getting an injured person out of there would be a big challenge, so that's an easy yes. Generally speaking, any space that has to be accessed by ladders is a confined space. Yes. If the access to the space is limited, like in the case of this vault door, it's going to make entry and exit more difficult. One more thing to note with this one is that if you can freely enter the space without having to step over a raised threshold or stoop under the opening, and if the equipment in the space doesn't interfere with traveling to the exit, it's not considered a confined space in terms of entry or exit. Okay, now we're on the last part of the definition of a confined space. Number three, the space must not be designed for continuous human occupancy. Just ask yourself this, was this space not designed for people to be in it for long periods of time? The reason for this is, if a space is designed for people to be in it, there will be some important considerations in place, like lighting, ventilation, space to accomplish the anticipated work, and an easy way to get in and out. Knowing that, which of these images would you consider not to be designed for people to be in for long periods of time? Yes, this space may not be small, but it's also not designed for people to be in long term. So what you're looking at here is the inside of a cooling tower from the ground looking up at the inside. So yes, this one is not intended for human occupancy. 
Now, it's hard to tell from this image alone, but judging by the space, it has been set up with a workstation, lighting, and is sized to be comfortable for an employee. So just based on the photo, it was set up for people to be in long term. To summarize, here are the three questions you need to ask yourself to determine if a space is a confined space. One, is the space big enough that you can actually get inside of the space to do your work? Number two, is the space difficult to move in or out of? Number three, is the space not designed for people to be in for long amounts of time? Remember, for the space to be considered a confined space, it needs to meet all three of those criteria. When it comes to confined spaces, stay safe and stay smart. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was an improvement on your normal safety training, please hit that like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe button. And now a big shout out to Gross Gold Logging and Excavating. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.